In our previous episode, we talked with David Goggins, the super endurance human being, freak yes. of nature. And it was a very frank episode about facing your fears head on, committing to them, battling them, and then showing up every day to push yourself through that discomfort. We thought it might be fun to actually welcome Chris Ty Walker, our personal trainer, who's been helping us battle some of those fears, yeah. got us race ready. And of course, this month's theme is rebuilding confidence. There's no better way to rebuild some confidence than getting some physical wins under your belt. So we're super pumped to wrap up the month with Chris. He's a local here in LA. He's been yelling and screaming at me and Johnny to yes. get our shit together. And slowly but surely we have. I of hope he agrees. You. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you for having me. And how did you get started in, in the fitness game? For me, fitness, I started when I was like 13 years old. I ran track for Great Britain for 10 years from like 15 through 25. Um, so I was like the quickest kid on the playground. I quickly got drafted in the sports teams and I ran track for England starting at 15 years old. I ran the one turn hurdles um, and just progressed through the junior ranks, working with the British team, some great trainers until I was 25 and retired from injuries. So I started track very early, stayed with track and through going to college, running the college sports teams, um, getting a degree in sports science while I was at college, and then just staying with the British team running track. And I mean, I was one of those geeks. I didn't go out, I didn't have any fun in college. I was up at five in the morning training. I would do double workouts every day. College was not a good experience for me back home. <laughs> I mean, I had a tough time back in London because it was just like, it was work. I worked from 15 onwards. Um, always running, always training, and it was a tough grind. So when I actually retired at 25, I just transitioned from training for my own Olympic dreams and then into training my clients. And we've talked a lot on the show about Barry's boot camp and the impact that exercises had on not only our mental well-being, our physical well-being, but also our relationship. Johnny and I being accountability buddies and, and taking uh, Barry's boot camp classes together has been a lot of fun. And you, of course, are one of the head trainers at Barry's boot camp, yelling at us in class, outside of class. Yep. So I've been at Barry since 2008 now. I've been there for 11 years. I'm one of our master trainers. Um, it's a dream. I, I actually fucking love training at Barry's. Like for me, I see 200 people a day. Like this morning, I taught two classes, both sold out, 50 people in each lunchtime class, another 50 people. Like it's so great for like to walk in and like have my clients just hand me their health and be like, hey Chris, look after me for an hour, please. I completely trust you. And then I guide them through, as you guys know about Barry's, it's half cardio, half strength work. Um, I mean, it's a great workout and it's for everyone. We'll talk about it later, but like, it's a, it really is such an amazing workout for everybody. There's no excuses. Well, we were laughing about that a little earlier, how intimidating it can be. And I know the first Barry's boot camp, the first Barry's boot camp class that Amy dragged me to, I was completely intimidated. Dark room, loud music, a lot of people who are in fantastic shape in West Hollywood. I fought through a little bit of anxiety there, started to see, okay, this workout is pretty fun, enjoyed the environment, the energy, and started taking Johnny there. But of course, that initial time showing up at a gym is going to be intimidating when you don't feel as confident as you like or as in shape as you like. But that's the same for whether it's a boot camp class at Barry's or it's the regular 24 hour fitness or whatever it is. like the confidence one has going into the gym for the first time is very difficult. Like if you are out of shape, you, it is like you're gonna walk in and see people lifting huge bench presses and squatting tons and running fast and these huge muscles and these girls in tiny outfits. And so someone who's not worked out prior to that and to see that environment, I mean, it'll be very overwhelming. And, I, and a lot of people walk in and walk out straight back out and don't go. And it's, it's sad, like a Barry's environment. I mean, I tell everyone, like I've had everyone from the biggest losers in there to some of the most, I've had Olympic athletes. I've had like Hall of Fame tennis, but Andy Roddick came to class for like three months straight every other day. And so like you get everyone from every spectrum of life. And if you can have the confidence to walk in, you gotta know that no one else in that gym gives a fuck. Like they're there for themselves. They don't care if you're the worst shape or you're the best shape, they're there to work on themselves. They've paid their money. They've given an hour of their day to go and better themselves like they don't care if you're lifting lighter weights and running slower speeds all they care about is how they're doing and how they're looking so a lot of people walk in with this anxiety like oh i'm not fit enough to barry's or i should be a certain way or look a certain way that's all mental that is on you guys to have the confidence in yourself to walk in that space and just know what you walk in that you're gonna be taken care of but to get yourself there and just know that really no one's gonna judge you and if they judge you fuck them like no one has the right to judge anybody in this world. And if they do, they just, I mean, 
it's on you to not let that get to you. And so have the confidence to work on yourself. And that's pretty much where it ends. Like you, once you agree that you can do it and you bring yourself into the environments, you'll be fine. I think programs in the gym is difficult because not everyone knows how to lift or how to run or what to do in the gym. So yes, yeah, like having structure is very hard and I get it, like you don't know what you're doing. But in a group scenario, there's no reason you can't just walk in. Well, and the other thing is that, that all the trainers at Barry's are all coming from a great place. There's a lot of positivity there. And they're going to help you work through everything so that you're not intimidating, so that you do enjoy your your time there, that you do want to come back that, that the, It should be the best hour of your day, the hour you yeah, give yourself. Absolutely. You show up and you work hard for yourself. Like, we get up in the morning, we go to work, we hustle all day. You get maybe one hour away, you're not at home. So, like... That one hour a day you actually give yourself to better your own life should be the best hour. It should build you up. So the, our goal as teachers there is to make sure you have a great experience. We entertain you like it's fun. The music should be popular. It should be fun. Okay, my music taste might not be everyone's music taste, but there are trainers that have. That's my biggest complaint about me. <laughs> okay. You're never going to get a rock. I know. I mean, you're never going to get that rock class. <laughs> Like, I might give you a couple songs you've given to me if I find some remixes, but I'm sorry. Like, oh, I go in knowing that I'm going to, the, the music is going to be a dentist drill into my temple. However, so you, you know, I try not to, I try to just focus on the bass drum and, and roll through it. So you um, don't like my Christina, Christina remixes? <laughs> really? She's my girl. Like, I just told you that so you'd so be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Christina, Britney, Beyonce, what's wrong with that? I, you bring up a great point because it, whether it's the gym or that networking event or that social outing, we all have this anxiety of, oh, I'm going to be judged. In reality, everyone is so self-critical to begin with. I know in my first Barry's boot camp and hell, my, my most recent Barry's boot camp class, I'm concerned about my form. I'm concerned about am I getting something out of this? And I'm so focused internally, I can't possibly be judging all the people in that class. I, it's, yeah, it's the Barry's, I mean, the tough workouts. And you've got to work hard and you've got to focus on, I mean, there's 50 people, it's loud, it's dark. Like you've got to focus on yourself and what the trainer's teaching you. You haven't got time to judge the person next to you. Like hopefully you can fist pump them, like way to go on that 5.0 best speed. I had a guy in class today, I was doing 30 second sprints. I had one person running 80 miles an hour and another person running 7.5 right next to each other. And it doesn't matter if you're running 18 or running 7.5 for your best speed. As long as it's your best, I don't care. And they don't care. Like. If you see someone busting their ass and it's their first class and they're overweight and out of shape, you're only gonna get mad props from people around you. Like yeah, sure, only absolutely. Gonna, and I tell my classes, like turn your neighbor, high five them, tell them great job, smack them on the ass and get to the floor. Like it's a positive, fun environment. Like it's not never gonna be like, judge that person next to you. Well, <clears throat> mentioning that that hour should be the best part of your day. It's gonna be setting up how you go into the world and how do you go into all of your errands and all of your work for that day. And if you set it, I know for myself that if I set it up correctly, if I get into the gym and I go through that and I enjoy myself, I'm going to enjoy myself the rest of the day. <clears throat> but the other thing about it is, you know, if you're not enjoying that hour, that's on you. There are things that you can do to, and to work on your attitude about what you're doing and going in there. And this goes for any sort of learning process or any, and certainly anything when it comes to you getting better physically. Right? So when you've come to our gym sessions and you want to beat me and walk out of the gym, that's on you, not me? Yeah, that okay, is on great. me. As long as, we, as long as everyone knows that, that is on, on the you. record. <laughs> on the record, it is on you. And I'm actually having fun thinking about kicking your ass. Okay, so, great. So. <laughs> yeah, we've had sessions in the gym where Johnny's literally thrown a little tantrum and <laughs> thrown toys out of his stroller and just stormed off. Well, so we I, have I'm video, gonna, actually. I'm, I'm going to blame that on my intermittent fasting because I do definitely come in hangry just to start. <laughs> yeah, I don't agree. On, for the record, I don't agree with that either. We'll be getting into that later as well. Uh, I think we should get into it. Okay. Right? I think that's the other thing, right? <laughs> when we look at exercise, when we look at building your social skill set, Anything you want in life, there's going to be ups and downs, which is why the theme of this month is rebuilding your confidence. You're going to have moments where you feel really confident physically. You're going to have moments like us on that first run for our half marathon training. Of mm -hmm. How are we going to do this? We're only five miles in. I, don't, I can't even imagine 13. But it all starts with showing up that first time and then pushing yourself a little bit further each and every time. And some of us have the willpower to do it on our own. Some of us need a trainer. And Johnny and I realized that getting into 
wanting to get more healthy, wanting to hit these goals and, and get our best time in the half marathon that we really need to be pushed more than something that Johnny and I could do for each other. But obviously a big part of it is what you eat, right? Yep. When you talk about exercise, we talk about diets. And I know Johnny is smiling because we get asked constantly oh, by okay. our clients, what's our diet? Are you putting butter in your coffee? Are you keto? Are you paleo? Are you eating eggs in the morning? Are you not? Everyone wants to know what everyone else is eating and what's working. And in my experience, it, it sounds like, much like with nutrition and everything else, it comes down to solid fundamentals. It's not about the fat. It's not about the latest and greatest thing. When you have solid fundamentals, things start to fall into place. So firstly, these boys worked really hard for their half marathon training. I was so proud of how hard they worked day in, day out. We ran, what, for 12 weeks of training for it? Almost they, 16, yeah. They crushed it. They, I mean, we started in a terrible place and they ended up doing very, very, very well. So for everyone at home, they did bust their balls for me. Um, when it comes to diets and nutrition, uh, this, is a, this is a tricky fucker. There's no right diet or right food plan for everybody like we're all different beings we all i mean for example for me i'm terrible with dairy i was at a, sh a shake place the other day and i had a chocolate milkshake i was having a bad day um <laughs> <laughs> it was like joe's juice it was like natural organic bullshit whatever um i didn't realize there was, it was straight up dairy mm -hmm. I, I saw like vegan protein in there and i thought oh it's just gonna be a vegan drink and then literally i was shooting my brains out all day <laughs> like I had, it was awful. Like, so my body, I know I don't do well with dairy. I don't do well with gluten. And so that's me, but like, that's not everyone. And there are benefits to have dairy. Like it's great protein. It's great calcium. It's great everything, but it's not for me. I've got to get it elsewhere. So I could tell you what to eat, what I do, but it's not necessarily what's right for where you're at. So yes, yes. First thing you got to work out what you're allergic to, what works for your body. Like I know I, I eat very, very, very simply. My main meals are always like some sort of brown rice pasta or quinoa pasta or like a whole grain that's not gluten, basically, clean meats and vegetables. And I can eat that all day, every day. And I, I don't get bored. I don't, cause I personally don't care about food, which isn't great because most people do care about if they want to have their pizzas and their McDonald's. And I'm like, I don't get it. I don't walk by in and out and be like, oh my God, I'm craving that. It just doesn't, doesn't work for me. A cookie shack or something like that, I'm all about it. <laughs> but like general food like doesn't do it for me, so that's me personally. And like I encourage my clients to eat a regular diet. Like when you first wake up in the morning, you've had 10 hours of no food. So your body is already fasted. So you'll hear this time and time again, like the most efficient way to fat burn is then first thing in the morning. Because your body's starving, you have two major energy systems. You have carbs and you have fats. Carbs is number one. And so overnight through general metabolic rate, like breathing and just surviving through the sleeping patterns, you burn carbohydrates. And so when you wake up in the morning, they're all gone. So then as you wake up and do your, you've heard the expression fasted cardio, it's where like you go like for the slow walks, the walks, the slow runs, like a rowing class or like a spin class, like you're burning fat straight away because you haven't put any, any food in you, any fuel in you. And by the time you have your first meal of the day, if it's, it should be carbs and you get carbs and vegetables, um, that's then replenishing your carbohydrates, which you lost from overnight. So now when you do your fasted cardio, you're just going to burn fat cells, which is why working out first thing for a slightly low intense workout is good. And I fully encourage it. I don't agree with me personally, and this is my point of view, doing strength work on no fuel because you need the number one energy system, which is carbs to then be strong and lift. So you do your fat burning work when you have no carbs in your body first thing in the morning, and then you can go away, you can eat breakfast, you can go about your day and hopefully have time in the day to do your strength work later. Um, if it's a strength session, you should always eat before it, but gonna, say your gym workout is at 6 a.m., you've gotta eat something before you go to the gym. It just doesn't work. And I fight with AJ and Johnny day in, day out, because they do them. intermittent fast. They go 16 out, they go what, you were 16, eight split? Yeah. So in a 16 hours split of no food, and then eight hours they eat two or three meals in that block. Me personally, I would say fasted cardio first thing in the morning. It's traditional. It's very simple. Then you have three major meals throughout the day and three snacks. So you eat six times in a day. A two or three hour block. These boys don't like what I'm saying. They're both laughing and shaking their head. <laughs> that so that sounds have, like a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not though. How is making your breakfast of some sort of like rice or whatever toast or like some eggs and some vegetables in the morning hard work? It's not. Then an easy shake or a snack midday and then a good protein, a good carb, and a good vegetable at lunchtime, 
And some people say no carbs after a certain amount of time a day. I care about macros and you've got to get your macros. So macros are your major energy systems. They're like carbs, fats, and proteins. You've got to get your macros that are right for you. And this is a little science-based here, but you have to lose weight, which most of our clients want to do. You've got to have a, a minus, like a, you've got to have a deficit of 3,600 3, calories to lose one pound. So if you're eating your food and it takes time to lose weight, you can't just starve yourself for a week, have a calorie deficit and then put it all back on again. Because again, if you calorie surplus of three of 3,600 calories, then you'll go, you'll put on the weight. So you've got to like mac out your macros over your goals. Does it make sense? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you want to lose weight, yes, you want to steadily have less intake as you do expenditure. If you want to put on weight, you put on size and muscle, you got to eat more. But like everyone's goals are different. But for me personally, a good balance of your macro count is the way forwards. So stick to macros instead of the fad diets is what you would say. I personally would. Like, I mean, you boys are like, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> your point, what works for you, right? So what works for me? If, if a habit is built and a habit allows you to stay healthy, whether it's fasting or not fasting or eating your bobos in the morning or not. That is my go-to. Whatever the case may be. <laughs> There's these, but I don't, I don't know if, are they everywhere? I, I don't national? think anyone knows. I've never heard of it until you. About. So this is, this is like this gluten-free, dairy-free, GMO-free bullshit. Okay, so but, it's just in LA basically. <laughs> the rest of our audience is like LA never thing. heard of it. Um, and it's a Bobo's bar and it's like this flapjack <laughs> that literally, I, I mean, it's my crack. If I don't have one in the morning time, <laughs> like I'm a cranky fucker. I'm like, so do you my... think that's why Johnny's cranky then? He should have Bobo's He's every morning. He's missing out on his Bobo's. Yeah. There we go. There now we, we solve that, your, that your hanger problem, issues. Solve, that, I mean, I'm not saying it's healthy for you. But it's <laughs> totally my, I have a sweet tooth. Like I eat really clean. I don't really drink that much. Um, I just like cookies and cakes. And that's, again, everyone is different. You have your one thing that you like, whether it's the cookies, whether it's not eating breakfast for me works. I don't like eating breakfast. It's a chore. I've never liked it partially because growing up, my dad was like, you must eat your breakfast and force me to eat it, whether I was hungry or not. So I have an aversion to it and fasting works. Now I definitely feel exhausted after our sessions. Because I definitely have, have to crush a shake. Be, Cause uh, you have no fuel. You have yeah. nothing in your body. You're totally empty. So you have, your body needs that fuel to, to, to work. So, I mean, you got to eat. But the same thing, like, it's about balance. Like, I'm not a crazy person when it comes to fitness and training. Like, it's, I'm going to support people having a Friday night out with their friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Have a glass of wine or three and enjoy your night. But then just pick and, pick and choose your battles. If you know you've got a birthday weekend this weekend, AJ, that like you should be having a really good week of food and nutrition until the weekend. And then you'll enjoy your weekend out. And yeah. you'll go wine tasting. You'll have your bottles of wine. And then you'll be back on it next week. It's about balance. Yeah, if there's no balance, then you're not going to be able to maintain and stick with it. Right? Well, We're talking about habit building here for your lifetime. Sticking with a fad diet for a few weeks and then crashing and then jumping to another fad diet is not sustainable. Well, and you know, one of the things that we have to hear about every, and well, I'm sure just as much as you do, the next fad diet, you, Chris, I want your thoughts on this. And we get it all the time. Yeah, we're not even in the fitness industry and, and we get asked. And, and, and so much stuff uh, comes out. And, but I think worst of all, it's always the person that goes, well, what about this diet? What about that diet? But yet has a problem with every diet that they want to, that they want to talk about. And it's like, well, pick something, anything. It's well, that's like, why it comes back to fundamentals, right? It all breaks down to the calories in, calories out. Yeah. I mean, most, if not all of the science shows that. There are obviously some caveats, but they're pretty small for the most, for most people listening, calories in, calories out is how you're going to gain or That's lose it. weight. Yeah. Now, how you get those calories, if you decide that you want to go all plant, you want to go all meat, you want to go keto, you want to eat fried eggs, whatever the case may be, if you're eating extra calories, you're going to gain. If you're eating less calories, you're going to lose. Yeah. And let's just put it real simple. If you want to be healthy, you have a healthy lifestyle. You know that cheeseburgers from McDonald's are not healthy for you. You know fries are not healthy for you. So just make a choice. Like when you go and shopping and you have a list of 19 ingredients on a bar of some sort, you know it's not great. It's yeah. got a whole of crap in it. Like there's certain bars, like three or four ingredients, they're all natural ingredients, like fruits, the vegetables, whatever, and you can read it. That's what you should be eating. Like, yeah, there are those times we have those fun meals out and you do indulge, but like if eat clean, be simple. 
and have a balanced diet and move your body. Just fucking move. If you sweat and eat well, you're going to be healthy. Well, and, and certainly your age and, and and your other activities, I mean, these things are going to play a role as well. As like what, whatever you may have found worked really well in your 20s is certainly it's going to be changing as you roll into your 40s. And, you know, I, I have a lot of friends who who even in their late 30s still think they can plow through their life and how they were living in their 20s. And I like to me, it's just like, when are you going to revisit these ideas? Because they're obviously grinding you into dust. Uh, but I, but with, without taking that step back, it's hard for those people to, to see that. You know, for us who are always into fitness, self-development, and these things, we're, we're looking at what has my body working at its best. And if you're not looking at it in that manner, you're just going to do what you've always done and expect those same results. Now, when you started working with us, we came to you with a goal, complete this race. Yep. And we finished the race. We beat our goals on the race, the goal times that Johnny and I had set out with you. And then we kind of felt this lull of like, what now, what? now, now what? Now what? And there's always once you once you train for something very specific, and then you come out of it. It's always like you train for a race, you train for a race, you achieve the goal, you hit it, and it's like you're gonna crash. That is why I gave you guys ten days off. I was like, don't see me for ten days. Go away, enjoy your time, work out, don't work out, and then we'll revisit in two weeks' time. We'll start again. And now we're talking about setting up our next set of goals and joining this tough mudder race, building out our team to do it. You've actually completed one, so you have an inside look at what that pertains to, but. For those of listeners who are like, okay, that's great. I don't really know what a good goal is. What advice do you have for someone who's trying to set goals for themselves, who've now come to the realization that, okay, I want to change. Where do I start? What's the best goal for me? So goals have to be what we call smart goals. Goals must be smart. So if you look at the S-M-A-R-T, so smart, they have to be specific. They have to be measurable, obtainable, realistic, and time-based. So the guys did the half marathon, which for them was their goal. It was very specific. It was 13 and a half miles. It was 13.2. It was measurable. We could measure our distance if you improved and so on. So if you haven't got a goal like the boys had, like it'd be super simple. Like I want to do a th- hundred pushups without stopping or I know a three minute wall sit. Like they could be really basic gym based goals until you work out what it is you're training for. So just give yourself, like, measure yourself at anything. I'm going to run a mile on the treadmill and see it be, may it be six minutes, may it be 11 minutes. And then just work for four months, and then repeat the same test. Like give you until you actually focus on, like the boys have their tough motto or the half marathon. Like give yourself small little goals you can train for something. Like give yourself something because without having that goal there, you're just going to the gym and like lifting for no reason or running for no reason, and like you don't know if you're getting better. Like I had a client this morning on the track, and we it was a second session with me, and we ran a 400, 300, 200, 100, and that was our entire session. There were time trials just so he'd get a marker. It wasn't his goal to do these things, but it was a marker, so we had to like, we took him, we know his times, so we can repeat the same test in eight weeks time to know that the train we're doing is counting and making making us better. So like, just give yourself any small, mind. it could be anything. Like do a wall sit, see how long you can last in a wall sit. Then go, you do your training for four, five, six weeks of squats and lunges and plies and whatever else. Go back, build your endurance, and you should smash it. So goals right now can be very small, until you find some friends to run a half marathon with or do a tough murder or whatever it is. You can set each other challenges, but just find yourself something. Yeah, and baselining it, right? It's what we're going through now with our tough mudder training. We know it's gonna be happening in April, so let's baseline, okay, what's our grip strength? What can we lift? How many chin-ups can we do? How, how can we or not climb that peg wall? Yeah. What, are we, what are we doing tomorrow, boys? <laughs> Exactly that, baselining on the track. Yeah, Early we morning have, we birthday have an, gift. We have me. an hour long endurance session tomorrow morning. These boys have no idea what's coming their way. Great. Yeah, so they're, they're, super, they're super excited. It's going to be freezing. It's going to be five, <laughs> we got five thirty in the morning. We're getting down there. But we've and, agreed to one hour of suck. Yeah. yeah. But we have to have this base level because we're going to, um, so we're going to replicate the tough mud in the best way we can with the conditions we have. And they're going to work hard at it. It's going to suck. And we're going to repeat it closer to the race. And you'll see how far you come. And with obviously the measurable side of things, this is where we start to build that confidence. Much like we talk a lot about journaling, when you're actually documenting how far you've come, even 
when we had some down runs where you know we went in okay i want to hit a pace of seven and a half minutes a mile on this i want to i want to smash it because the last time i did seven minutes at 45 seconds a mile and then you know what it's not there and i'm at eight minutes a mile at least when it's measurable and you've continued to measure through the course you allow yourself okay that, that didn't happen the way i wanted it to but look at all these other times where i actually did improve and it powers you through those lulls those low moments where maybe you are lacking a little bit of that confidence or feeling like oh, i don't know that i'm going to be able to do this i know Johnny and I had a number of gut check conversations as we got closer to that distance. So we're working up to 10 miles. We're like, oh man, this is a lot longer, harder than we had anticipated. Yeah, but there's also why I was very strict with you guys. Like you have to track it on these apps. You have to tell me exactly what your speeds are. So we can, we can talk about it. Like Johnny had a great day. Like he had an amazing run. What was it? Seven, eight miles you, was your best one. You had an amazing run. You felt really great about it. Your splits were awesome. For the next couple of weeks, you struggled. Shins well, hurt. And then we had to discuss yeah. why, what was going on. We broke it down and we rebuilt back up. But like, well, no, I mean, what I enjoyed about that, and obviously that day I was upset because I was pretty beat up. And that's that; those things are going to happen. That 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 happens in any sort of training. What I loved about it, though, was having that down week that I knew I could do better, and I was a little bit upset with myself, but working through it and then rebounding. I mean, there, that allowed me to feel uh, as if I could accomplish anything. And, and, and so from, and, you know, and those things, those transition into every walk of life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and for AJ and I, you know, we know that for uh, doing all the training for the half marathon, I would say that our productivity had went up at work and our mood at work was and confidence and, and confidence. I, I think of it as like a, a glass in front of you. And as you're, you're pouring confidence into this physical glass, right? I'm feeling more yeah. and more confident with my physical. All of a sudden the confidence is spilling over into other areas of your life. I totally. walked in front of the room more confident. I hung out on vacation feeling a lot better in my body. So I was just more confident socially. All these, these things compounded from setting clear goals, working towards them and seeing that growth along the way. When we were starting our working out and accountability uh, training that Johnny and I were doing together, we didn't have any goals. No. We just said, hey, we should probably work out. Everyone tells us we need to be working out. Okay, let's find a plan and let's work out. And then that program was 16 weeks. But to be honest, we weren't really measuring. We were just doing it. We're like, oh, I think I did this last week. Let's add some more weight on. Oh, maybe not, I'm not feeling it. Well, and, how, that, and we went through that thing for a few years just recycle it and do it again and eventually it was like uh, if we're gonna get we need something else <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was monotonous it got boring and then of course if it's if it if it gets boring if it gets monotonous well then that is certainly not a thing that i want to roll into in the morning no because you won't you won't go to bed on time you'll go out with your friends the night before you'll drink or whatever you won't take it seriously the next day exactly and then it snowballs into oh, i'm not gonna go Ab absolutely i couldn't I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah. The most important thing about it, like, I always tell everyone the first thing when it comes to you set goals, but then two, as these guys have, they they hold each other accountable and they show up together to the gym. Like they show up to meet me and I'm the, I mean, I shout at them, which is fine, but if they're not there, I'm like, where the fuck were you? Like right. you have to, like, if you go out the night before, your friend wants to go see a movie, you get in at 11 o'clock, you gotta be up for work at seven, which means you gotta go to the gym at five. And if you've been out to 11, it's not gonna happen. But if you know you told your best friend, I'll meet you at the gym at 5 a.m., you're gonna fucking show up. And if you don't show up, that person's gonna be pissed at you because now they're on their own. It's, it affects their workout. So like having someone to work out with, with the same goal is probably my number one most important thing. Yeah. Well, that's another reason why I enjoy berries as well, because for each time I'm going in, the days change of what uh, muscle groups are gonna be working out, but also, uh, the trainers are all different, so you don't know what you're rolling into. Mm -hmm. But and but even with the same trainer or, or such as yourself, you don't run the same routine uh, from from one week to the next. So it's like you can't prepare for it or you can't slag it off the night before because you don't know what you're rolling into. Much like, well, certainly our workouts uh, with you. I, he we likes don't, to leave us in the dark entirely. Yeah, and it's and it's and 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 we come in hopefully at our best because we know it's going to be brutal. Now we got a question here from James in Northern California. He asked you and AJ are accountability buddies, Johnny, my friends don't want to work out. How do I find one? And I feel like a lot of us have 
some negative people in our lives, some people who don't care about these goals, who don't care about achieving the things that we want to achieve. And it can feel lonely at times. Like, oh, I don't have anyone to work out with. I don't have an accountability buddy. But go to the workout class. Go to Barry's boot camp. The person that you're high-fiving on the treadmill next to you can easily hold you accountable next week. They're into fitness. They're working on themselves. So first thing, so like, say you have friends that want to work out with you. And you pay twenty five dollars to go to class, whatever it is. That, that paying that twenty five bucks the night before, because you can't cancel within twelve hours, makes you go. So the first thing, like yes, it's expensive, but it makes you show up. So first off, you're going to four classes. It's a great way to do. It. Like pay the money the night before, it makes you go. So you don't, you don't want to waste the twenty five dollars. Um, so that, I mean, yes, we are, we will kind of afford the twenty five bucks five days a week. So another great way, and we're so lucky now with social media that you can actually create groups where yeah. And you can create challenges inside a group, like this week's workouts, and we'll do the squat challenge this week. And so you're going to do like 50 squats on Monday, 60 squats on Tuesday, and you can like post videos yourself doing it, and you can find a friend. I'm sorry, I, it's bullshit. At some point somewhere in the world, you got a friend who likes to work out, whether they be in England or in Australia and you're in LA. Like you can take videos of you doing that workout, post it to your friend and be like, hey, here's my workout today. Let's see yours. Like you can hold each other accountable no matter where you're at. Yeah, even the Strava app that you were yeah. telling us, hey, mm -hmm. I want you guys to track your, your times in. You know, I signed up for the app thinking, oh, it's just a running app. There's so many other it's competitions on there. There's yeah. communities built around all of these activities. Mm -hmm. And James, listen, sign up for the challenge, theartofcharm.com slash challenge. You're going to find people in the challenge working on themselves, and I'm sure you'll find an accountability buddy. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly where you live. As Chris said, checking in with people and making sure that you're going through the motions, not just saying, oh, well, I wish I had someone. I wish I could take this step. I hope I had so could find someone like Johnny. Take that first step, high five your neighbor in class, go online, look for the workout community near you, and you're gonna find people who want to improve themselves. A lot of times we have blinders on because we're surrounded by people who don't want to improve themselves, who don't care about that. And that's a, a very important thing. And you're going to need to leave that nest, so to speak, because, as, as long as you're in there, those people are not going to want to see you work out. No, they're going to bring you down. They're going to do everything in their power to hold you back so that that finger doesn't get pushed in their face. Yeah. And, and we've talked well, about we, that. Yeah. I mean, we can even say this now. I know Johnny and I have had numerous conversations about this, that once we start hitting the workouts hard and we set a goal for ourselves and we had to tell people in our lives, no, this personal goal, this fitness goal for me is more important than going out Saturday night. It's totally. more important than hanging out on a random Tuesday and eating a slice of pizza or two. People were turned off by it. There yeah. were people in our lives right now that we're not as close to you. And yeah, everyone's like, oh, you guys host the Art of Charm, everyone loves you. There are gonna be people in your lives who do not like you improving, who do <laughs> not wanna see you out distance them, lap them on the treadmill, kick it up to two, five, 2.5 or three miles per hour more on the treadmill. They don't want to see that. They're comfortable in their comfort zone. And all of a sudden they see you ticking ahead of them. Well, yeah, they're going to be looking to pull you back. Yep. I mean, with every studio and every gym in the country, you can always, there's always group fitness classes. Every like Planet Fitness, which I think is $10 a month, which hopefully everyone can afford. Um, you can, there's group classes in there. So there's no excuse that you, have, you don't know the there's workout. A, you don't, like there's people in those classes you can go and meet. And it, it takes time, it takes confidence. But if you're in the gym lifting, there's someone else lifting next to you probably on their own with the headphones on, meet them like, hey, do you wanna meet work out tomorrow together and start making like friends and start making people meet people at the gym? It's difficult, not questioning that. To be the first person to put yourself out there and initiate contact and work with someone else isn't easy. But if you want to, there's people there who are like-minded enough in the gym who want to work out. Yeah, and, and science shows that we are interested and attracted to familiarity. So if you are showing up to the gym every single Tuesday for a month, that fifth Tuesday, that person's already seen you lifting, they've already seen you doing your things, they're gonna be warm to you walking over and saying hello. It's not as scary as we make it out to be, especially if we're coming in the mission of like, hey, I'm gonna push you, you're gonna push me, let's do this. In those situations, it's a lot easier to connect than just completely cold some random person on the street. Yep. I know that I don't get bothered in the gym. We met a lot of great people in Johnny's gym working yeah. out because we'd see them every single week the same time. And slowly but surely you start chatting up. Oh, what are you guys working on? Chest and back? Yeah, us too. Oh, great. Check out this workout. Check out this exercise I'm doing. I got these abs. Yep. So there's a lot of stuff online. So a lot of people say like to me, oh, I haven't got time to go to the gym, which is totally fine. I've got parents that 
single parents at home that work, go home to the kids, kids are up, kids go to, like, I get it. I you mean, know, it's, it's funny you should mention that. Um, and it's, it is one thing if you have children, and I can, that is an excuse that I, I can understand. I have single friends who just have their regular job, don't even have a girlfriend, and they're like, and I mentioned at the gym, and they're like, yeah, well, I'll just put that on my list of other things that I gotta do. I'm like, how do you, how can you even say that? It's, it's like it's crazy. It I is mean, utterly I, I crazy. Have, I have a kid, and it's, I, I it, use my time. Well, and, and of course, I mean, we're, you're setting up how the rest of your, your day is going to go. Yep. And it's, it shouldn't be the thing that it goes on your list last. It should be yep. the thing that's setting up everything else should be going on your list first. So with that, though, I mean, it is so important. And if it should be on first and you haven't got the time to go to the gym, there are so many online platforms to learn fitness from. Like I teach at two online platforms and you can sign up. They're very affordable ones, like seven ninety nine a month, one's $10.99 a month. And you can sign up live and do live workouts and see me live. And I can, I mean, the, one, of the, one of the ones I work for is called Victorious. And I can see you log into the class with me and I can see, oh, AJ signed in. What up, AJ? And like, I don't see you personally, but I see your name mm -hmm. on the screen. Like the other day I was training like 300 people and they just like cycle through and just around America and they can just log on from anywhere in their living room and do the workout with me live. So I can hold you accountable. And you can Instagram me like, hey, Chris, I'll see you at 3.30 Monday for your class. See you there. And then I can be like, oh, AJ, you went in class, what happened? Like you can reach out to people no matter where they're at. There's so many different online platforms. Yeah. If you can't get to the gym, there's no excuse to not work out. Well, I was laughing. There was, uh, it was one of the weeks where you told me to make sure I got in a, a day of stretching. And How I did remember, that go? And I re well, I just remember being really busy. So I just threw on a yoga class on YouTube and followed it. It was like, yeah. she's not leaving the house. You don't need, to, you know, if, hold yourself accountable and figure out what works best and get it done. And accountability, we've had a whole episode on this, but the power of accountability to fueling you to reach your goals and making sure that in those moments where maybe you don't feel like doing it, there's someone else there being like, hey, you promised to me you're going to do it. Started with Amy, worked with Johnny working out. Hey, I got to do this. Now kick it up another level and getting a coach. And this is really, in my mind, the difference between the group setting and the, the personal accountability is, you know, when it came to Johnny, there's only so much yelling that I can do at Johnny. Hey, you can do more. We can do this. As a friend, you know, there's a limit to that. And he's just like, dude, cool. It. I'm done. Yeah. Like, uh, it's good. When you're paying someone to coach you, there's another level of honesty that goes along with it that friends can't have. And on top of that, there's another layer of competition that comes out of it. Like, oh. yeah, Johnny and I are competitive, but when someone's in my ear yelling at me that I could do more, <laughs> I can push harder, I can run faster. Well, I want to prove that person wrong. Absolutely. So when we're looking at setting goals, that's fantastic. If you have the willpower, we're going to talk about habit building next month as a theme. Then obviously we're going to start working towards those goals, but sometimes people need an extra boost. They need a little extra more. And, and, We've talked a lot about top performers and how we're seeing it time and time again in all areas of life. They're getting coaching, whether it's social skills, whether it's physical fitness, whether it's public speaking, whether it's listening. There are coaches for everything. And again, digital coaches as well. Yep. Doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, your three hundred dollar an hour personal trainer in person yelling at you. But there's a coach somewhere online who's going to push you beyond what you think is possible. Totally agree. So enough with the excuses. I know David Goggins told us all about what he thinks about excuses, but we feel the yeah. same way. It's everything, you're creating your own blocks. Like mm -hmm. if you tell yourself, I haven't got time to go to the gym today, that's an excuse. I bet you at some point in that day, you sat on the sofa, watched some crappy TV show for half an hour. You could do a circuit in front of your living room, watching TV, you'd be doing abs and a push-up routine. You can be doing something. You can move your body in some capacity. At some point, everyone has half an hour in that day. Like. It's an excuse like, oh, I just didn't have time today. Now, let's talk about another theme that we see a lot and hear a lot is, you know, that's great, Chris. You're an athlete. You were born an athlete. You have the athlete gene. I'm not an athlete. So it's not even something that I can compare myself to. And we, we see, obviously, with social media, you know, everyone's highlight reel. We see all these people who've been Photoshopped to look ridiculously <laughs> good. And it can be difficult for an outsider who's like, well, that's just not me. That's Chris. Chris is blessed with the confidence and the athletic ability. Okay. So those pictures online that you see, as you said, AJ, they're Photoshopped. They're taken in the best lights. Like 
it's it's pretty discouraging when you see all you see these perfect bodies and these perfect workouts because it's that that photo isn't real life like i've done photographs online where they're taken 30 seconds apart and you see me unflexed in unflattering lighting and i'm still in shape of course but like i don't look like i'm jacked out i then rotate my body a certain way filter a certain way have the sun bleeding down and like now i've got a 12 pack like so what you see online isn't real life So first off, like it's so, I mean, those goals that you set yourself shouldn't be compared to what you see online because it is unrealistic. I mean, I've done it sometimes. I've compared myself to those people. I'm like, I'm 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 meant to be in this amazing shape. And part of my industry is to look a certain way because then I get hired by TV shows and magazines to do workouts. And like, it's tough because like, I look at those, I'm like, I'm not in that shape, but the front cover of Men's Health, the guy has been Photoshopped the crap out of. Like he's been shined up with some oil and he looks perfect. And it's like, so don't look at those photos and be so discouraged. Like, and this, again, just accept yourself for where you are. Like comparison is tough. Like we always look at someone else like, I want to be like that person. But like look at yourself and like set your goals from where you're at in day one. And then on day three, you're going to move a little bit faster. You're going to be doing a little bit stronger. Like, you don't need to compare yourself to where someone else is at. Their journey is totally different than your journey. Your journey started the day you decided to start and then just keep on getting better from there rather than, looking to someone else who's been training every day for 12 years and it's been their life and it's all they've done. Like you've been a mom of three with whatever and your day your day one starts the day you started. So don't look at someone else and be like, that's, well, they're so much further in front of me. They are because they've been training for it for so much longer. And we've all had those moments where we don't feel confident, where you feel out of shape, where you didn't hit your goals, where we didn't hit our goals, where we felt oh man, I, I'm 30 seconds behind the pace on this mile that I should be. What the heck's wrong with me? That's normal. That's yep. a normal part of the process. You're not alone in feeling that way. And we talked to Dr. Stephen Hayes earlier this month about this. The people who are always beaming with confidence, they're the ones running around in the clown suit. They're not being honest with themselves and it's going to catch up with them later. So this artificial Photoshop, uh, social media world, but then also just the people who try to portray this level of confidence that's almost superhuman it's just not real it's not reality people are going to have ups and downs people are going to feel confident in their results people are going to feel unconfident in their results from time to time totally we all we all have good and bad days like i i have to put on a monkey suit at my work like if i come teach class and i have 50 people rolling it and i'm grumpy and sad that day it doesn't work for anybody so yeah i come to people my clients come to my classes and i have to be happy i have to be positive positive. and for that hour when i'm in class like no matter what's going on personally like I have to show up for them. But like we all have ups and downs. We all have good and bad days. I mean, I I go through blocks where I don't feel like I can work out. I'm tired, I'm run down, so I don't. Sure. Like we all have those days. Like I did I took two days off this week. I was like, man, should I work out? Probably. Do I want to? No. So I didn't. Like it's okay. Like we yes, consistency is key. But again, listen to your body. Be own where you're at in that moment. And then just work hard when you can work hard. Show up when you can show up. But like we all have ups and downs. We all have good and bad days. The perfect fitness model on, on the screen has fucking felt like shit some days. Well, it, you know, it's, it goes a lot to say for when you're not feeling it to to go through the motions, to to, to get it done anyway, to build consistency. Yep. That's I mean, that's what discipline is. Whether or not you, you feel it, that you're going to get up. I, and for myself i mean there's days where i wake up before my alarm and i'm i couldn't go back back to sleep if i tried and i am wired beyond belief to to get the just day so started exci- just so excited to come see me absolutely yeah, I thought so and then there's days where i wake up and i'm like oh fuck chris <laughs> you like not, no, what a i am not in the mood for this today <laughs> but but, but again that's the thing like, it circles back to accountability oh. having someone like on those da- days where you're bad and you said you just got to be consistent and get up and do it if you have someone who's going to meet you at the gym at 7 a.m. and you've told me you're going to get there and it's 6 o'clock and you're like, oh, shit, I don't want to go, you're going to go because if you don't go, it lets down your training partner. Of course. So it's the accountability. It circles back to having someone, as I said, is my number one key point, is to find someone you can really work with, whether it's online or it's Skyping them in or it's meeting them at the gym or it's going to a class, like having someone hold you accountable on those days where you are having a shitty day and you do want to phone it in or you do want to quit, like, they're going to hold you to it. Well, you know, it's something that we were talking about yesterday. And it was it was a point that was taken from the Johan Hari interview with Sam Harris, where I believe, I, if I got this correctly, I would paraphrase, but he mentioned about how there was a, a poll done where 
people say from a decade to 20 years ago, if you ask them how many people do they have that they could count on for in a time of crisis or that consider good friends, and yeah, they would say with about a handful, maybe five. That's good. On average, yes, on, it's a, five. on average. Yep. And they now polling those people today, it is now zero. No. Yeah. The yeah, really? most common answer is zero. The most common answer. Then I feel very lucky. Well, well, so, like three, three or four. Absolutely. And and what does that say about our society where and I think that a lot of that has to be on on you yourself of not making those connections and not having those people in your life. That's that's not because everyone sucks. That's because you haven't put yourself out there to be vulnerable, to to wanna and help others to also have that that same thing that help be returned to you i mean that is that's very important yeah i mean i hear it all the time like oh my god la is such a hard place to date and i'm like then you're not trying yeah like yeah. you're not putting yourself in the situations to meet people to go at it you're hiding at home watching tv at home and you're not bettering yourself or you're just making blanket negative judgments about people yeah. writing people off before they even have an opportunity Right. And that's in large part what we're seeing with this, this highlight reel, this comparison mm -hmm. and this total lack of vulnerability. Right. No one's going online and posting their, oh, I had four Bobo's abs photo. You're posting the <laughs> I haven't eaten in two Promise days. Promise you it's good for you, everyone. Bobo's is good for you. <laughs> so in those moments, right, it's very hard then to, to want to be vulnerable, to want to put yourself out there. We have a question here from Brian Fleet. He says, it just seems whenever I take a step forward, I take two steps back. What can I do to break this cycle? My confidence has been shaken and I'm just not sure how to get started yet again. I mean, that could be this. That's the same in any part of life. Like you're at work, you have a good meeting and then you go away from your, you step out of the meeting and you have shit hits your desk and you feel like you, you're drowning again at work. Like it's in every situation, like you're always going to have an experience of doing well and then not always going to go perfectly. There is really, I mean... It's a tough one to like tell yourself I'm not going to get better. I'm going backwards every time I work out for like a day and then or two days and I eat bad and can't work out the next three days. So I've gone backwards two steps. Like again, create good patterns, good balance. Don't let yourself. I mean, again, telling yourself I haven't got time for three days to not work out is an excuse. So if it's, we're talking on fitness levels. So you take one step forward, you have a really great week of training and then you eat really well for a week and like I've had a really good experience and then you eat crap for the rest of the next week. And then now you're taking two steps back because you've eaten badly. Eating badly was a choice. No one forced that burger and fries in your face. That was a choice. You could have put it down and had a salad. Like, well, I live above Shake Shack, so yeah, they, they put it in front of my face. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> They pipe it into your building, actually. Yeah. The smells. <laughs> but like, so the two steps back, I mean, one, there's never really a step back. Failure doesn't exist in my well, mind. Well, I think you just said it. There, there is no step back. It's what you're focused on, right? If you're always focusing on the things that you've messed up or the mistakes that you've made or, or you haven't achieved or, or yeah. And you're just, and you're always, then you're always going to see them. So it's always going to seem like, oh yeah, well I've made these efforts, but oh, here comes all the garbage because that's what you're focused on. Yeah. And, and, and we have to make sure that our perspective is focused on the positives if you focus on the negatives that's what you're going to get every day is going to suck every day is going to show you how worthless you are and that is once again that is a, that's a choice a on choice. you and i remember getting into self-development one of the very first ideas that i learned that even kind of blew my mind was that how i saw my day was or how happy i was was con was on me yeah and I, the first time i ever heard that i was like well, well wait, wait a minute and then i had to face that fact well then then why am i going to go into every day looking at it terribly and so by changing that and it was an instant shift and that's for everybody and speaking of that there is an actual my neighbor he was commending me about how uh much AJ and I had been working out and he goes, yeah, I wish working out worked for me like that. It has the opposite effect. <laughs> well, he's the one guy in all the world where working out doesn't work. The for outlier. Right? It's like, it's mind blowing what, the, what people will come up with and believe in order to get out of something they just don't want to do. Well, there's, there's a level, as we said at the beginning of this episode, of baselining. You gotta start somewhere, 
document it. This is my starting point. And then to your point, shifting that focus, it's not any steps backwards. No. You look at where you place the marker. Okay, you had a step forward, maybe you did a little better, and then you realize, hey, I got to celebrate those small victories along the way. Yes. Not everything is going to be completing a half marathon. Not everything in life is going to be running across the finish line. There's going to be miles on that half marathon that are below your pace that you're like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yep. This sucks. So which is why you have like that one end goal of a half marathon, you guys. But then I gave you like these short term goals. I didn't say we're going to go and run 145 for your half marathon like and go do it. We had a five mile race. We had a six mile. We had a seven mile. We had an eight mile. So along the way, you had these smaller goals. So you can't just give yourself one. Like, so my goal when I was younger was to win an Olympic gold medal. Didn't happen. But like throughout my training, it was like run a certain time at this meeting and then run for England in this meeting. And then so you set challenges for yourself like to get to the Commonwealth Games, then get to the European Championships, then get to the World Championships. And like there's, there's always different stages to get to your end goal. So if you set small goals along the way that you can achieve and that are achievable, because like you're not going to wake up and be an Olympic champion. You're going to wake up and work hard to get to the next step. So you worked hard to run the best you can for that five mile in under eight minute mile pace. And then it was a 750, then it was a 750, then it was a 745, then it was a 730. Like you worked slowly down. You didn't just wake up and be at 730 pace. Well, and so I'll, you, well, no, you, well, I was, I was going to say, if this is somebody who's going to be focused on the negative all the time, it's also going to make them much more difficult to work with to find an accountability buddy because who wants to be an accountability buddy if the guy is always looking for the negative uh, on the day and the workout and what and what's going on in that moment and in fact you it's not only an accountability buddy of someone to show up for it's somebody to cheer on yeah and I, I think listen part of it is first instead of setting these crazy goals right find the one thing that actually gets you excited that that gets you ramped up the idea of completing a half marathon for me after saying I hate running on the treadmill, I hate running in berries, it actually got me excited. It was like, wait a second, I'm actually running at Chris's medium speeds in class. I feel like I'm in great shape now in terms of cardio. What can I do to push myself further? I didn't just start day one in berries and go, okay, now I want to run a half marathon. No. So figure out what your jam is, what you're really excited about. And then those steps backwards don't feel like steps backwards. They don't feel it's like you progress. haven't won anything. Exactly. And it's not an all or none situation. We talk a lot about journaling and, and Strava and, and mm -hmm. tracking our stuff was also journaling in a way. It was showing us these runs. And, and when I had that bad run and I beat myself up, I went in the app and I was like, oh, but wait a second. I had my PR on this mile and the app does a great job of breaking it into small victories. Even if the total time, let's say I didn't hit the 40 minutes that Chris was asking for. Oh, the app gave me a gold medal because on this half mile stretch, that was my best PR in the app. So. The idea of small chunking it and celebrating the small victories instead of viewing everything as a finish line that you have to celebrate can allow you to look beyond some of those set setbacks that we have, which is natural. We got a question here from Emily Smith. She says, is resilience a trait you're born with or is it something that we can develop? And how do you develop that resilience when strong self-doubt or lack of confidence gets in the way of your growth? Well, that's a big question. I mean, yes, it's a learned skill. I don't think anyone's born super confident and super, super happy the entire time. It is very situational. I, I get days where I'm fucking down on myself. I, wake, I get up days, I, I work brutal hours and I don't get my workouts in and I feel like crap. I don't eat right. And like I get run down and I'm like, oh, it's a tough day. And then it's a choice to sit in that position. And as you said, like to be positive about it. Um, but you've got to learn to get back up and keep moving forwards from any, any, any setbacks, any two step backwards that you feel like you've had. Like, there's the stepping points and they're learning. You're learning from those mistakes. You're learning from those so-called failures. And then it's an experience and you get better from that experience and move forwards again. You don't ever, you don't ever fail. Like this, like, so you, to be resilient, like you have to just learn from it and move forwards and take the positive from it and just learn. You don't ever, you don't ever fail. It's exactly shifting your focus, number one. And yeah. I think even the most resilient people in the world, whether it was David Goggins or uh, Jocko Willick will tell you the same thing. They don't look at themselves as, oh, I'm resilient and it's a trait that I turn on. They shift their view. So instead of looking at all of the self-doubt, all of the negative thoughts that are swirling, they give themselves some compassion and say, I'm gonna do better tomorrow. I'm gonna show up tomorrow. I'm gonna make sure that I foam roll. I'm gonna make sure that I ice my legs and I'm gonna make sure that I hit that next run. How's the harder. icing going, Johnny? 
I yeah. think it's in his cup. I yeah. don't know that it's Great. on his leg, but Great. it's. <laughs> we could chat about that as well. Um, you know, it's it, resiliency is, is it's an interesting thing, and I, it, you know, there's this this idea that we're going to be able to to pick the, the the genes and traits that are for our children, like the the whole super person, right? And this is going into the future, and I was just reading some stuff about how actually ridiculously complicated that is because there's there's like so many set millions of switches that are going to need to be turned on and off and so you're not if you turn on these switches then these switches are not going to be going on so this whole idea of picking out all the positives is is it's difficult even for ourselves so it, the resiliency is something that's going to need to be built just like confidence just like uh, creativity, just like uh, your fitness, your physicality. So, you know, what are you willing to do? What are the things you want to change about yourself? And what is the plans that you're putting forward to to start to better yourself? We're not, if we were born perfect, we wouldn't be talking about this on well, this show. And even Jesse Itzler, one of our guests this year, he talked about building your life resume. Yeah. We talk about rebuilding that confidence. We talk about building resiliency. It's tackling new things it's challenging yourself i never thought i'd be running a race if you had surveyed me two years ago i would have been like fuck off i'm not getting on a treadmill let alone running a half marathon but if you continue to, to push that edge to find something else that that excites you and go after it and and put full effort behind it then over time you're going to have all these victories that add up to a mindset now of well i can take on that next challenge i'm not worried about those two steps back there were no steps back yep i mean it's one that there are, a, there are no failures in life. Like it's usually lessons learned. And if I'm, I'm my biggest critic, I expect the most out of myself. But if I actually take a step back on all the things I have achieved, not what I've not yet achieved, like am I the world's most known best trainer? No. But like, do I want to be like, like seen to be this like go to for strength and conditioning and for running? Of course. But like, I'm not there yet. But like, if I sit and harp on the fact that I'm not there, I'm gonna forget the fact that all the things I have achieved and the people I have helped and. Like, so they, those are the little victories I've got to remind myself that I've achieved. And then that builds my resilience. Like, we all we all have failures. We all have stuff that doesn't go our way. We don't get certain jobs. We get rejected by a boy or a girl, whoever. And you learn from it. You grow stronger and you fuel your armor with it and you move forwards. If you sit and dwell and suffer from it, then it's just going to suck. Well, I think technology is certainly, we rail on technology on this show. And in fact, I even, I just delivered I just deleted uh, Facebook and, and Facebook Messenger off my phone because I'm just tired of it. But, you know, all those things are putting you in a, in a position where you're measuring yourself to pick two people. There's no, it's just the facts that they're putting up and that's all you see. Well, yeah, let's think about this, right? 10 years ago, we were not walking around with these numbers above everyone's head, number of followers and likes and every way that we're being quantified digitally right now. And very easily, if I go to your Twitter, I go to Johnny's Twitter, I can see the quantification going on. We did, we're not wired to handle all of that data. And, and it's constantly being forced in front of you. As we were saying earlier, be better than yourself yesterday. Yeah. Focus on where you were and where you want to get to and just make that the goal. When we sit there and try to compare ourselves to one another and we go, oh, well, Johnny's resilient. I want to get that. I want to get what Johnny has. Well, you can't make that comparison because through the journey, there's going to be ups and downs. And that's truly how resilience is built. So that means, OK, I got to go through more downs. How are you going to go through more downs? Well, challenge yourself, set yourself up so that you're not going to run at a pace that you think you can. You're not going to be able to swing a golf club as hard as you'd like. You're not going to be able to do something the first time. But when you start stacking up those small victories, those small wins, now we start building that resilience that we're looking for. Well, and all those numbers, it, it's 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 vanity metrics. We talk about this all the time. They mean absolutely nothing and unless you give them meaning. And for myself, as somebody who's who's worked in the music business and, and who really enjoys the art and has performed for for decades, um, I love going to shows. And there's a lot of music that I'll go to. And I might be one of 15 people in the room and I am just loving it. Does that make this band terrible because they've only able to draw 15 people? It's not about those vanity 
numbers. I, some of the most amazing performances I've ever seen was with was me and my girlfriend sitting in the room at the time and, and looking at each other going, is this really going on? How is anyone missing this? That performance and it was the perfect time and the perfect place and there was no one else there to see it and it was special to us, but that's what matters. Not the number of followers that, that, that band has or the number of units that record has sold and that needs that same thing it needs to be going through of well just because this person has this many followers on facebook doesn't make them right it doesn't make them more important it oh, does that's one of my biggest pates in the world like i've seen these girls with like yeah. three million followers on social media and she's doing a squat with a watermelon <laughs> and like she has this most perfect but perfect body and i'm like the smoke you're smoking crack like this is not how she gets this perfect body and she's well, yeah. it's like because she has three million followers, everyone's like, oh my God, you're so amazing, this is so, oh my God, I'm gonna do the same thing. What? Oh like, yeah. It's, it's mind blowing. It, uh, absolutely. It, it and bugs the, the fuck out of me. It, well, this is, I mean, and we're exposing v very impressionable young people to these, these messages that need to be, they need to be fixed, or at least uh, they need to understand it just because, because of these vanity metrics does not make the things that they're doing right or or so uh, or you're supposed to be doing them or uh, listening to these people and taking it as gospel. And but those follows give them weight though. Like having someone be validated by so many people makes others feel like, oh my God, they must be doing it correctly, which is, mm -hmm. so it's, it's tough to make that divide. Yeah, and I think that's what this month's theme has shown us. We've had... Famous therapist, Dr. Stephen Hayes on, ultra marathoner, David Goggins on, Chris, who's been kicking our ass training. Every single one of us in these conversations has expressed self-doubt. Every single one of us has taken two, three steps back, picked ourselves back up, reassessed the goals, and continued to work towards those goals. And a lot of what we're talking about here with rebuilding confidence is a recognition that, hey, I could take a lesson from this. I can take a lesson from this setback, and I can reorient myself and move in the right direction. To wrap this up, Obviously, we've had some fun in the gym, some not so much some? fun. Yeah, <laughs> I've enjoyed every second. <laughs> I know you've enjoyed it. And I want to give you an opportunity to share a little bit of insight into me and Johnny, because I know a lot of our listeners are wondering what it's like to coach both of us. Yeah. So take it away. What, what have you noticed from our insubordination? I mean, <laughs> they're both so different personality wise. Like, I mean, I, I, I'll be very honest about it. Like I instantly was drawn to AJ's a little bit more, we're more of the similar people. Like we come from like a more methodical background. It felt like, and I could relate very quickly. Johnny was like a wild cracker. I was like, <laughs> what, what am I going to do with this one? Like he came in the gym, no form all over Zero. the place, drunk, smoking the night before. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to like, I, it was such a mess. And like to have someone be somewhat with their shit together, AJ and Johnny just come in with like nothing. And I was like, these boys should never train together ever. <laughs> and so I had to try and make their workouts similarly. The same workouts we're training together is harder in two different sessions, have the same goals and have them work at the same time, but not demoralize Johnny because he was so far behind where AJ was at the time, both form, weight wise, aerobic capacity. Like, and then you could also see him getting so frustrated with it. You were really starting to like get angry with the workout, angry with me. Like there were days where I would push you guys. Oh yeah, of course. And to, to the break. And, and, to the point, over. and to the point where AJ was like, looking at me like, oh my God, he's going to flip out and leave. <laughs> like, literally, Johnny's going to literally punch me and storm out this year. I'm never going to see him again. And those days I'm like, oh, you did such a good job, Johnny. You did really good. I'm so proud of you. Oh well, my God, you're doing amazing. Like it's, it's certainly where those are the days where the, where the most growth is happening, right? You're put, it's certainly pushed beyond, you know, I was pushed beyond what I was comfortable with and pushed to, and um, emotionally and physically uh, uh, frustrating, but knowing that this is this is what I signed up for. This is why I'm here. This yeah, is there have been days that I thought you weren't going to come back for sure. <laughs> I mean, I would I would ask him to ice his shins every day because his shin splints during the training. And I was like, yeah. you've got to sit in a bucket of ice cold water at least once or twice a week. Never happened. He was I think like, he oh, drank an ice water once. Great. He was like, oh, I'm still hurting, Chris. I'm like, do you ice your shins? He was like, no. And I was like, well, then fuck off. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> So a little insubordination. Yeah. Anything in terms of uh, the challenges put in front of us, what you're excited for us to, to face with this tough mutter? I mean, you both worked so hard with the race. Like you did 
take direction very well and you were both very committed to it which was super commendable um what was nice about the race was we could actually track our miles track our times very easily so now we're in a functional training phase where it's like a lot of body weight stuff i'm not sure you guys have done tough mudders but like there's like you crawl through mud you pull yourself up over walls you swim through the way through lakes like there's some some gnarly stuff going on like you have a barbed wire fence you gotta crawl under an army crawl through stuff and like do laps and burpees and like it's a little bit of everything so what's tough about this one is less measurable you can't really like analyze exactly we can we don't know what's gonna be on these courses we don't know if the wall's gonna be seven feet or 12 feet if there's gonna be a rope to climb up or if it's gonna have to pull ourselves up we've got to use each other like so we've got to challenge ourselves in a very different way so just how these boys attacked the training for the marathon i can't imagine they're gonna attack this one the same honestly this is more fun like there'll be i mean we have a we actually train at a very sort of functional training gym and i don't do you post that video of you guys the other day uh, it'll be going up on our social so and you'll, you'll they're, be they're, tracking so along this i'm sure you guys have seen ninja warrior before there's a, a piece of apparatus where you, like, you have these pegs and you like, pull yourself up this wall you gotta stick these pegs in pull yourself up using upper body strength and keep going up this wall so i showed him how it was done struggled but it's, it's still doable and then johnny stepped up and couldn't <laughs> even get one pug peg out of the wall and into the next one it just fell down like 17 times he's like fuck this and threw it down um, so the, this, I will I will climb that goddamn wall. <laughs> so like, there's little things we can measure and we can practice against, but it's gonna I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be fun training. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot of hard work. You're gonna bleed at some point in your hands for sure because it's a lot of grip strength. It's a lot of weightlifting and it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge, but it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, we've already started and it's already been fun. And you know, I, of of course, when we started the training, it was certainly nothing that I've ever done before. And we were laughing about that of, of doing workouts that were well beyond anything that we've ever done. And uh, the idea of having to become somebody who's able to do those things, which, which makes you have to change as a person to order to, to perform those tasks. And that is the ultimate in knowing that you're getting better when you physically have to alter yourself to be able to do something in the past that you weren't able to do. Which is habits. You got to show up, you got to repeat, 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 and you'll yeah. get better and stronger. And that's the power of a good coach. I mean, there were, there were moments where you had to yell and scream at us to get us across the finish line. There were moments where you had to pat us on the back and say, Hey, you guys smashed it today. Great workout because you knew that we were teetering and that's exactly why you get a coach to be pushed beyond the limits. And finding the right coach is, finding the right coach is very difficult. And we had a question earlier about this, finding the right coach. I think for me going into it, um, I'll, I'll break down exactly what I did. I was going to Barry's and I was testing out a, a number of the trainers at Barry's. Some I just did not jive with at all. Anything from music to, to the way that they were handling the, the workout and, and yelling in class. But I always left your class feeling like I got my money's worth and saw that your body type was similar enough that I'm like, okay, if, if I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna put my mind to it and wanna be pushed, then I wanna take it beyond what I'm getting in this class. I think Chris is the guy to do that. Then in working out with you, exactly that. It was the support when I needed it, but it was also the stick when I needed it. Like, no, you have more. Like, why are you quitting? What's wrong with you? Calling me out on that. And of course there's gonna be moments where you wanna quit. There's gonna be moments where you're like, my hands are bleeding, my legs are sore, my shins are shot, this sucks. But as, as you've oriented yourself to that goal, you have that just in the foreground of like, hey man, I'm gonna run these 13.1 miles. This is gonna be pretty awesome when it's done. And now, okay, let's reorient on another goal. Okay, this goal is Tough Mudder. So those who are listening, if you wanna join us in Southern California, it's April 6th, we're building out a Tough Mudder team. Yeah. We're gonna open it up, application to our audience. I know some of you have already done a Tough Mudder. If you wanna give us some advice as well, you could hit us up, aj at theartofcharm.com. You can find us on social media, at The Art of Charm. We're gonna be sharing some more of our training sessions with Chris, uh, and, and you'll get a, a few laughs, hopefully. You'll see some of our failures as well as some of our successes. Chris, where can the audience find more about your workouts? I know you have a treadmill series that kicks your ass online. So part of my stuff online, I want to create content because obviously I live in LA. People don't always live here. So I want to make sure I have workouts accessible to everybody. Um, so I created a treadmill series. So it's really for all different abilities. Yes, sometimes you go and the speeds are too fast for you. But I, it's an online program called the treadseries.com. And it's a 30 minute hit workout on the treadmill. It's interval training. And I guide you through um, basically like 
Some of them are mile challenges. Some of them are speed workouts. But it gives you structure. So if you are in the gym and you want to hit cardio that day and you have like it's that 5.0 on the treadmill is boring as fuck. Like just running and doing nothing for half an hour doesn't do anything for you anyway. So I created a program where you can really work hard, get a great sweat, burn 500 calories in 30 minutes, which is great. And you can really push your body and it's you can, and you can track how well you're doing because say you do one of the episodes and you're at beginner speeds and then three weeks later, you're half a point above beginner, not quite intermediate yet. So like you can see how fast you're improving. So there's that, which is great. So it's called the Tread Series. And I know for you guys, I've done a discount for the series. It's like $25, it's $25 series, but with a code, which is going to be what, Charm, I think it is? Yeah. Charm, you'll get 20% off. It's, it's, it's super fun. Um, you run with all kinds of kinds of celebrities. There's some comics on there. There's some really hot models on there. Like it's a fun, it's a fun one to work out with. There's an over fifties episode. So really there's a pregnancy episode. Like I really make sure like there's a little bit for everybody and it's not just these like, super athletes running. So there's that. Um, I work for two uh, like sort of weightlifting companies. One's called Victorious and one's called Body Rock. They're both online, like online training programs where you can sign up for a monthly fee. It's pretty nominal. It's like, as I said, it's like $10. And you can sign in for these classes, the half an hour long classes, and you can just sweat with me. And you just, we lift weights in the comfort of your own living room, do it at the gym, like you could, the on demand, you can do them as and where you want. So I'm on, I'm on Victorious twice a week, Body Rock, I pop it in and out of. I haven't been there for a couple months now, but like all my series is are in something called hit, uh, Sweat Flicks, and you can find my series there, and there's a ton of great footage. Um, it just gives you something to follow and some guidance. Like there's nothing worse than going to the gym and not knowing what to do. So for your cardio, you got the tread series for like not strength training based, but like for cardio lifting, you have those two series there. But like, reach out. I always have stuff on social media. My Instagram is uh, C T Y Walker, uh, C T Y E Walker. Um, always got workouts on there. I'm happy to ask questions, uh, answer questions, and have you guys check in. Yeah, if you want to see the workouts that Johnny and I are doing and take part yourselves, you can find Chris there. Thank you so much for stopping by, Chris. Thanks it was for fun having me, guys. Thanks, man. Sharing some of our workout journeys with you, and we're excited to post up the next challenge.